Hi, I'm Neil Zerker, and this is OneTankTrips.com. We're going this week to my favorite city in the entire world, Ottawa, Canada. That's our classic one-tank trip. Actually, it's five one-tank trips. We've compressed them into about a half an hour. We hope you enjoy it as we take a classic one-tank trip to Ottawa. Canada's capital of Ottawa offers so much to see and do. From the spectacle of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police musical ride, to the regal changing of the guard on Parliament Hill. From the quiet charm of a double-decker bus in a country lane, to a small sidewalk cafe where you can while away an afternoon. There is the magnificence of its National Gallery of Art. The beauty of the Venetian-like canal that runs the length of the capital city. And of course, the focal point of the city, Parliament Hill, sitting like a fortress overlooking the Ottawa River. My son Craig and I are headed for Canada to see and experience all of these things. So how do we go all the way to Ottawa on one tank of gas? Simple, we only drove to Toronto, and then took the train the rest of the way. The Canadian Via Rail system offers several trains every day from Toronto to Ottawa. The service is not only convenient, but fast as well. We're allowed to go 95 miles an hour. And they keep the speed at the 95 mile per hour marker a good bit of the way. And that means that it's often quicker to take the train than to drive. Approximately four hours between Toronto that and Ottawa. usually takes how long to drive the car? I would estimate about five hours. They save mm -hmm. at least an hour. Oh, definitely. And of course, then you don't have all that hassle with parking once you arrive at your destination. A good part of the journey runs right along the edge of Lake Ontario. You can sit back and watch the world go by, perhaps catch up on some work, or just take a snooze. Part of the first class service they offer includes food and drink. On the menu of the day we traveled was filet mignon or smoked salmon. Craig said he'd rather have a hot dog. He settled for steak. If only all decisions were that easy. What's the cost to make this high-speed trip from Toronto to Ottawa? About $100 Canadian each way. But they also offer large discounts, some up to 40%, if you can travel during midweek. And then there's the fact that U.S. money is worth more than Canadian. So in the long run, taking the train could turn out to be cheaper than driving all this distance. You can board a VIA train at either end of Lake Erie, either Windsor or Niagara Falls. Incidentally, another nice thing about VIA trains they run on time. In fact, we arrived in Ottawa nearly 10 minutes ahead of schedule. This is Canada's 125th birthday and Craig and my first visit to the Canadian capital. So we're anxious to see the town. In our next report, we'll tour Parliament Hill and see the famous changing of the guard, all part of a special one tank trip to Canada. By using the train from Toronto, we were able to stretch this one tank trip all the way to Canada's capital of Ottawa. Dominating the city skyline is Parliament Hill, the seat of the Canadian government. The best way to see Parliament is with one of the many knowledgeable capital guides that give tours throughout the day. So right now we're in the uh, foyer of the House of Commons. The House is over in that direction. It's the lower chamber of Parliament, the elected chamber, a bit like the House of Representatives in Washington and you like. This is an incredibly beautiful building, from its Hall of Honor, with its many arches, to the warmth and charm of the wood-paneled National Library in the rotunda that overlooks the Ottawa River. The highest point on Parliament Hill is the Peace Tower and its observation deck 22 stories above the ground, where you can get a bird's eye view of the capital city. On the ground floor is the Hall of Remembrance and its book of names of every Canadian who has died in the service of his country. Every day at 11 o'clock, they turn it according to a specific schedule so that at the same page is showing at the same time every year so the families can know what, when a person's name is coming up. But what draws everyone to Parliament Hill is this. Tradition. The red-jacketed guards of Parliament Hill. Their story starts here at this Canadian Armed Forces base outside of town. 
They are members of the Reserve of the Canadian Armed Forces, who volunteer during their summer training, but also provide the ceremonial guard for Parliament and the Governor General's house. It's a lot of work, and it's not easy. What can I say? Five days, I know we have. Once you go past the diet, and the ice rate is given, then the dressing's by the right. That's why there's a right guy. When they come here, they do a general military training course before they're ever allowed to don this uniform and go on Parliament Hill. Uh, and even while they're doing the ceremonial functions, they continue infantry training and reserve training. All that training pays off each morning during the summer when the troops, resplendent in bearskin hats and red coats, parade down the streets of Ottawa and onto the grounds of Parliament to perform the ceremonial changing of the guard. When the troops finish and march off down Elgin Street back to their armory, they pass the Lord Elgin Hotel, a landmark for a half century in downtown Ottawa and the place that we stayed while visiting the capital. The Lord Elgin has just completed an $11 million refurbishing. We found the rooms to be compact but clean and the furnishings in great condition. The best part is the fact that the hotel is within walking distance of Parliament Hill and an added bonus to you pet lovers who like to travel with your pets this is one of the few hotels in downtown Ottawa that allows well-behaved pets in the room. Some of their package plans offer prices as low as $70 per night. In our next report, we visit some world-class museums, and Craig gets a rickshaw tour of the Byward Market, and we both learn about an Ottawa delicacy called beaver tails. It's been called the last great museum and an architectural masterpiece. It's the giant Canadian Museum of Civilization that covers acres here just across the river from Parliament. Inside, you'll find majestic totem poles that are the centerpiece of an exhibit about early natives of this land and their way of life. Many of these totems have been cut from a single tree. You can also take a walk through time in the museum from the earliest exploration of the North American continent down through the years as whaling stations. Small village squares unfold around each corner. Another wing of the museum is dedicated to children that is definitely hands-on for the kids, like this puppet theater. There is also a taxi from Pakistan that caught Craig's attention. What do you think, Craig? You think this would replace our little car? Yeah. From an igloo to a clown's wig, children are invited to live out their fantasies in this special museum. Incidentally, if you visit the museum on Thursday, they offer free admission. We took a lunch break and a stroll through the Byward Market. This is where farmers come to sell their produce and plants. One of the charms of this city on the Quebec border is that many of the merchants unconsciously switch back and forth from English to French when talking. And it was here that Craig and I learned about a local delicacy called the beaver tail. It's a whole wheat pastry that we stretch into the shape of a beaver tail, and then we cook it on soy oil. After we cook it, we put um, butter, then we put cinnamon sugar, cinnamon sugar lemon, any kind of topping on top. Beaver tail, Craig. Ready? After sampling them, we agreed they are quite good. And it was here at the Byward Market that Craig got his first rickshaw ride. They had a good time. <laughs> For a fee, these hardy young men and women will give you a fast-paced ride around the several blocks that make up the market area. The spectacular glass-walled National Gallery offers this dramatic entry into the largest collection of Canadian art in the world. Here you'll find sculpture and carvings in silver and gold, paintings that capture the early years of this huge country, and some whimsical modern art that takes many shapes and forms. 
But perhaps the most fantastic exhibit is the reconstruction of the Rideau Street Chapel inside the museum. In the 70s, unfortunately, it was destroyed, demolished. But luckily, the chapel was, was kept and has been restored and was painstakingly put up. And we're very proud of it. It's, it's a beautiful example of Gothic uh, architecture. Another enduring symbol of Canada is its Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And in our next report, we get an opportunity to see their famous musical ride. We took both car and rail to get here, and there's so much to see that you'll need several days just to experience the highlights of the town. An easy way to get acquainted with Ottawa is to walk it. But if your feet give out, or it starts to rain, then consider a tour on one of these wonderful old double-decker buses. You can pick one up right across from the War Memorial on Parliament Hill. For an hour and a half, you'll see the sights with an experienced guide pointing out interesting facts. Rufus and Nicholas Street Youth Hostel. This used to be a prison, and the last public hanging in Canada took place here. Another way to see the town is by canal boat. The Rideau Canal, which runs through the heart of the city, was built after the War of 1812 as a supply line in case of an attack by the United States. Today, it's a pleasant way for Americans and other nationalities to get to know the Canadian capital. This afternoon, we'll be taking a leisurely cruise down the Rideau Canal system. We'll be traveling uh, 16 kilometers, or about 12 miles, and this should take us about one hour and 15 minutes. If Canada has a symbol other than the maple leaf, it has to be the red-coated Mounties, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. This is the headquarters of the ceremonial unit of the Mounties and the only members of the elite force that still wear the scarlet coats and Smokey the Bear hats. Each member of this unit volunteers to spend three years in the ceremonial unit that travels all over the world. Each member must spend every morning being closely inspected by Mountie officials to be sure that he or she measures up to the spit and polish image that they require. These are also members of the famed RCMP musical ride. And if they're not on the road and you're in Ottawa, you're invited to attend. This is free. This is probably the best show in town, and it's one certainly I never tire of. I've seen their performance a million times, and every single time it brings a tear to my eye. Um, the musical ride is, uh, is a regiment that Canadians are very proud of, and it's recognized worldwide. The full dress rehearsal is held in the morning. The actual musical ride ceremony is held at sunset. These match black horses are especially trained for the RCMP at their own breeding farm located nearby. Each of the Mounties must take at least six months of equestrian training before being allowed to take part in the intricate musical ride that is done with no vocal commands between horse or riders. If a hat blows off during the show, they're not allowed to retrieve it until the end of the performance. The big finale is when all of the 32 members of the ride gather at one end of the field, lower their lances, and stage an old-fashioned cavalry charge down the field. <laughs> A sort of hair-raising way to end our visit to Ottawa as we board the train for the quick trip back to Toronto in our car. Canada may be 125 years old, but the country really started here at Niagara-on-the-Lake many years earlier. This was Canada's first capital, and this picture postcard town seems to have changed little in the years since. My son Craig and I found all kinds of interesting little stores in which to shop. In fact, it seems hard to believe that the razzle-dazzle of Niagara Falls is only 10 minutes away. Here, time seems to have stopped sometime around the turn of the century. This is the middle of the fruit belt of Ontario, and farmers still set up on the main street to sell fresh berries and muffins made just that morning. The accommodations seem to match the town. We stayed here at the Pillar and Post, an inn where Queen Elizabeth once spent the night. They offer a package that includes four-poster bed, 
fireplace, and even a whirlpool bathtub for as little as about $85 American. That also includes dinner in their dining room and breakfast the next morning. You can also rent bicycles here, another fun way to see this lovely Canadian town. And another reason you might want to visit this community is its internationally famous George Bernard Shaw Theater Festival that's held each summer. Let's see what's on the schedule for today, Craig. It looks like it's going to be Charlie's, uh, Charlie's Aunt. That's over at the festival. What's here at the Royal George? On the Town. Hey, that's a musical. I think you'd like that one. OK, you want to see it? OK, let's go. Sight, right, right. New York, New York, a hell of a town. The Bronx is up, but the battery's down. The people ride in a hole in the ground. New York, New York, it's a hell of a town. After the theater, there's just enough time to do a bit more shopping before we head back to Cleveland. As I said, that's one of my favorite one-tank trips. And by the way, most of the prices we quoted today aren't much different than they were 20 years ago. Thank goodness. Next time, we're going to another great one-tank trip. For now, this is Neil Zerker, OneTankTrips.com. Please subscribe.